Kosua. Welcome to this week's Real Estate News Report brought to you by realestate.com.kh. Cambodia's real estate news leader and the best place to find your dream home. Thanks for tuning in. This week we're going to be speaking with Grant Fitzgerald, General Manager of IPS Cambodia. Welcome to the show, Grant. Thanks, James. Thanks for coming in. Alright, Grant is an Australian citizen who has spent the past six years working in Cambodia and China and has developed a solid understanding of the Phnom Penh real estate market. Grant specialises in expat rentals in Phnom Penh and he also has a history of investment and business consulting and project management and project valuation, due diligence, business planning, financial modelling and fundraising. Grant has also worked in the microfinance industry focusing on project development and implementation, and he holds a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in Economics and Finance from Curtin University, Australia. Alright, Grant, thanks for coming. Uh, our first question today is, what are the top three areas that expats should consider when moving to Phnom Penh? Um, VKK1 is definitely still the, uh, the most popular area in uh, Phnom Penh. It's got the most facilities, it's surrounded by restaurants, and it's probably got the most accommodation options as well. Um, however, as such, it's the most expensive area in the city as well. Mm. Um, another up and coming area, which is, is also um, getting a little bit more expensive now, is, is Tom de Sac, which is just next door to, um, to BKK1. Uh, there's a lot of new construction uh, going on there, there's a lot of new apartments, but there's some really nice accommodation options, and it's, and it's a little bit cheaper than BKK1. Mm. Um, for, for those looking for, for a little, uh, accommodation that's a little bit cheaper, uh, they head out to the Russian market area. Again, there recently, over the last few years, there's been a lot of new developments, a lot of new service departments there. Very trendy. Um, and even now, I used to live out there a couple of years ago, but um, compared to how it is now, there's a lot more restaurants, there's a few bars, and, and it's a lot easier to get out there. Sure. Okay, nice one. And uh, what, sort of, what sort of amenities can expats expect when they move to a home in Cambodia? Which is um, much different than back home. Yeah, for, I mean, you've got kind of two real classes of accommodation. You've got uh, your service departments and you've also got your standalone apartments. Mm -hmm. For your service departments, most of those include pretty much all your, all your services. You've, you've got uh, security, parking, cable TV, Wi-Fi, cleaning. Um, some of them have a pool and a gym. There's a lot of options with gyms and pools now. For those of, uh, that choose a standalone apartments, it's a little bit more basic. You, you, you really have to organise all those services yourself. But you save on the price. Right? You do, yeah, yeah, they're, they're a much cheaper option. Okay, and what are what are the most common concerns that you, you get from expats expats moving to Cambodia? Um, probably still the most common concern we have uh, for new expat arrivals are uh, security. Um, there's you know a lot of them read uh, forums or talk to their, their colleagues when they move over here, and they might have heard a few stories about drug dealers and, and things like that. So they so they want to ensure that they're safe. Um, also now with the, with the with the way the city's developing, um, a lot of them really ask about our construction, and we're going to show them apartments to ensure that there's no new construction or new developments um, mm, sure. near the apartments because that can turn into a, a bit of a nightmare, mm. um, especially for those if you've already signed a 12 month contract. Um, yeah, I mean they're probably the, the two biggest concerns for for, uh, for the yeah, that's here. Okay, and and what are sort of the lower, the middle, and the upper end prices that that an expect can expect to pay in Cambodia? Um, for for a service department, they they really start at about um, about six hundred dollars uh, for at the lower end of the bracket. Sorry, for about between about six hundred and eight hundred dollars a month. Uh, the the middle of the bracket is probably about nine to thirteen hundred dollars a month, and then the higher end uh, properties are about fifteen hundred a month. Right. So that would be fully serviced. Fully serviced with all with all the uh, with all the facilities and uh, existing services included. Uh, for your standalone apartments, again, they're, they're cheaper, you know, for, for a budget one bedroom, you can go from about $300 to, to about $600 um, at the lower end of the market, $600 to eight or 900 in the uh, mid-range, and then the higher range is about the upper end of the price. Sure, sure. So something for everybody. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and what are some secrets that you can share about securing a good rental rental lease for an expat in Cambodia? Sure. Um, firstly, definitely shop around. Um, there are now a lot of a lot of uh, accommodation options in, in Phnom Penh. Again, service apartments, uh, standalone apartments. It's short-term uh, options for those that are, you know, that, that want to look around first and, and get 
to settle for a few months. Um, so yeah, there's, there's really no, no need to rush uh, into, into taking an apartment. And um, despite what your agent says, despite what your agent says sometimes. <laughs> um, also, it's, if you know your requirements when, when you come to town, it's, it's much easier to find an apartment if you know what you're looking for, and, and it's much easier for if you work with an agent, if you can tell them what you're looking for, again, for them to find it for you. Mm -hmm. um, Long-term leases are also a benefit um, when it comes to negotiation the rental price. You do get uh, more bargaining power the longer your lease is. You know, if, if it's a six-month contract, you get uh, a minimum bargaining power for a 12-month contract plus. Build some, build some trust in the relationship. That's right. Yeah. yeah if, if you know you commit yourself to a landlord, then you need to be really good about that. That's right. Yeah. The other thing is, um, is get help. Uh, there, there are plenty of agents out there that um that know the city really well, um, and it always helps as an expert. That's right. And how about when it comes time to, to signing a lease agreement? What should you look for in a, in a solid rental agreement in Cambodia? Uh, firstly, you should always you know read the lease. Thoroughly before you sign it. Um, one thing to look out for for sure is to make sure what services are included and excluded in the agreement. Some people get caught out, uh, they, they, they take things for granted about what's included, and when the monthly bill comes, there's the, it's, a, it's above what they expect. Uh, maintenance is another item that people do get caught out on. Uh, a lot of landlords here don't pay for maintenance on property, um, and again, it's you know, it can cause a lot of angst when something breaks and, and the, the tenant's expected to pay because the landlord refuses. Or when your bond's due. That's right. Um, another one which is very uh, common is conditions when you break the lease. Um, essentially, if you if you break the lease by leaving, leaving early, um, you forfeit your deposit. Um, some people aren't happy with that, so again, it's, it's worth discussing with the landlord before you sign. That's right. Before you sign the lease. So. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, I guess, what are some of the typical prices for utilities such as electricity, water, internet, cable, and the like in Cambodia? Yeah, um, so electricity, that's usually around uh, 25 cents a kilowatt, um, which translate for, translates for a one bedroom apartment uh, between about 40 and $80 per month, depending on your, your aircon use. For a your typical two bedroom apartment, probably around about 80 to $120 a month, depending on how much you use the aircon. And they shouldn't be charging more. No, no, that's right. It, it, it's done on usage, but yeah, you, the maximum you'll pay for electricity should be about thirty cents per kilowatt. But that's that's still quite rare. Yeah. If you see that in the contract, you can challenge it. Yeah, I'll negotiate that because that's, that's quite high. But um, water's very cheap. It's between about two dollars and ten dollars a month. Um, internet can be as little as about ten dollars up to about sixty dollars per month, depending on the speed of download. Yeah, how it works. works. Cable TV is five dollars a month, um, and cleaning. If you are organising your own cleaner for about twice a week, it's probably about sixty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Okay, for for expats looking to find their first home to rent in Cambodia, where's the best place to start looking? Um, definitely start on the on a website, uh, the IPS Cambodia website or realestate.com.kh. Um, are great tools to to start shortlisting properties to look at photos to see what's out there and, and give you an idea of, of, of services that are included prices mm. um, everyone's got a different budget and they when they first move over here they don't know what to expect mm. you, you look at a, web, web, a couple of websites and, and you really get a good idea of what's available and, uh, so you're running around the towns every, every exactly day. and and a lot of the a lot of our initial inquiries that we get um people shortlist the property before they arrive Yeah, nice one. Okay. And what are some of the benefits of using uh, ideas to look for expat rentals? Why, why do you guys specialise in this market? Okay, well firstly we're a completely free service to all tenants, um, so that there's no cost involved in coming and having a chat and then going out with us. Um, secondly, uh, we're essentially expats helping expats. So, uh, we've all been here for, for a number of years, we've all been through the process and then we've moved into real estate. So we've, we've been around for six years now, so we've Done a lot of a lot of contracts when I was looking into an house, and then we can really just make it easy for those people who are looking over here. Mm. And a, another thing is, is because um, we've been here for, for a number of years, we do have a lot of uh, really good relationships with tenants. Uh, sorry, with landlords, um, and we can actually negotiate some some cheaper prices because of those long-standing sure. relationships um, that really are available. Isn't available.
they know you have a lot to sell support. Yeah, you know, they know that we bring, bring good clients and we've been working with them for a number of years, so we have a really good rapport with them. And um, there, there's a lot of low complexes and standalone apartments which do give us discounts, which you wouldn't normally get if you rented yourself. Okay, nice one. Okay, Grant, thank you very much for coming in Thanks and the show. Me. And everybody else, thank you very much for tuning in. This has been another Real Estate News Report from realestate.com.kh. If you wanted to read more of the latest real estate news or buyer's advice and seller's advice, check out realestate.com.kh slash news.